So at ASCO, we presented the first co-primary endpoint and also safety. Remember that the first co-primary endpoint of this study was progression-free survival. Firstly, in patients with PDL1 CPS score of 10 or more. This primary endpoint was clearly met with a hazard ratio of 0 0.65, which is not only statistically significant, but also of a great clinical importance, in my opinion. The median progression free survival moved from 5.6 months with placebo and chemotherapy to 9.7 months with pembrolizumab and chemotherapy. So regarding the activity and in conclusion, pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy improved progression-free survival in patients with CPS 10 or more, always talking about PDL1 positive patients. Regarding toxicity, maybe two key messages. The first one, that patients who received pembrolizumab and chemotherapy did not have more treatment-related adverse events or treatment-related grade three to five adverse events. These grade three to five adverse events were observed in 67% in of patients with placebo and chemo and 68% of patients with pembrolizumab and chemo. However, when we look at the immune-mediated adverse events, obviously, patients who received pembrolizumab and chemotherapy did have more adverse events compared with placebo and chemotherapy. Grade 3 and 4, no grade 5, were observed in 5.2% of patients treated with pembrolizumab-based therapy and 0% of patients treated with placebo and chemotherapy. Basically, these adverse events consisted on hypothyroidism, 3% grade 3, 4, and hyperthyroidism, 1.1% grade 3 and 4. So no more adverse events, slightly more immune-mediated adverse events.